Good day, we are the group 3 and our topic is all about metals. We are going to discuss about the types of metals, methods of joining metals, metals for concrete, storage and care, ferrous and non-ferrous metals. Types of metals. There are 11 types of metals and these are aluminum, iron, steel, copper, tin, zinc, brass, bronze, chromium, nickel, and lead. Aluminum. It is a soft, non-magnetic silvery metal characterized by its light weight in which one-third of that is iron, brass, or copper. It has a low melting point, high thermal and electrical conductivity surpassed only by silver and copper. It has moderately high coefficient of expansion. Readily combines with oxygen to form aluminum oxide, a transparent film that makes it corrosion resistant. It is readily attacked by alkalis, hydrochloric acid, and other dilute acids. It is subject to galvanic action and should therefore be electrically insulated from direct contact with metals other than zinc, cadmium, magnesium, and non-magnetic stainless steel. It is easily worked can be hot or cold rolled, extruded, forged, pressed, drawn, molded, stamped, bent, and shaped. It can be riveted, bolted, welded, brazed, and soldered. In architectural work, practically all fabricated forms of aluminum are used in rod, bar, extrusion, casting, sheet, strip, etc. Extrusion is the process of shaping material by forcing it to flow through a shaped opening in a die. Extruded material emerges as an elongated piece with the same profile as the die opening. However, these products are not fabricated from pure aluminum, but in alloy combination with iron, silicon, copper, manganese, magnesium, zinc, chromium, and nickel in a small quantities to give strength and other desirable characteristics, but often reduces its corrosion resistance. As you can see, there is a billet aluminum, a die, and then the final product. Alclad is a term applied to certain aluminum products, refers to the protective coating or cladding applied, primarily for corrosion resistance to thin sheets of an alloy whose corrosion resistance has been decreased by the constituents added to give strength and other characteristics. Cladding improves the appearance of the alloy. This thin, integral cladding usually consists of pure aluminum, magnesium silicide, or zinc alloys with or without manganese. Types of aluminum. There are eight types of aluminum. The first one is aluminum sheet and strip, used for roofing, flashing, gutter, etc. Second, aluminum foil. It is rolled to a thickness of 0.005 inches, used mainly for thermal insulation and vapor barriers. It may serve also as a surface finish material when laminated to various sheet and board materials. In this form, it is also supplies additional insulation value to the sheet or board. Third, Corrugated aluminum. This is rigidized sheet fabricated of special aluminum alloys specifically developed for this purpose. It usually consists of an aluminum alloy core of one type clad with another. Highly corrosion resistant aluminum roofing and sliding. Fourth, structural aluminum. When aluminum is used as a structural material, important factors arising from its physical and chemical characteristics are considered. First, aluminum can be extruded. Therefore, a structural shape can be produced economically to meet the specified structural re design requirements. Second, very corrosion-resistant aluminum alloys are available, requiring no painting and the thickness of sections can be reduced since a safety margin is not necessary to cover loss of strength due to corrosion. Third, aluminum is very lightweight material. Hence, 
aluminum girders and columns show increased efficiency with large base spacing. However, because of the modulus of elasticity of aluminum alloys is lower than steel, it means that buckling is a possibility and should always be checked. Fifth type of aluminum is aluminum doors and windows. These are generally fabricated from extrusions and rolled shapes. Sixth type of aluminum, aluminum panels and sandwich panels. They are prefabricated units generally manufactured by using dimensions of modular and non-modular window width for building exterior and in 600 millimeter, 900 millimeter, and 1,200 millimeter widths for interior partitions and dividers. Panels for the exterior of buildings primarily consist of an aluminum exterior facing which may be an aluminum casting or an extrusion or sheet material which has been pressed, stamped, or formed into specially designed shapes. A sandwich panel comprises a system of construction called skin construction. A cellular core of aluminum or other material has a skin of aluminum applied and bonded to both sides, thereby forming a unified whole in which all the components work as one. Seventh, ornamental aluminum. Many kinds of rods, bars, pipes, railings, fittings, and special shapes are manufactured as stock items for use in ornamental design of railings, grills, screens, etc. Eighth, aluminum mesh and wire cloth. They are used for fencing, particularly chain link fencing and insect screening. Types of aluminum finishes. There are six types of aluminum finishes. Number one is mechanical finishes obtained by grinding, polishing, scratching, sandblasting, embossing or other treatment of the surface to achieve a desired effect or to provide a base for other finishes. Number two, chemical finishes. Based on chemical reactions with the aluminum surface to achieve one of the following results are itching, cleaning, or polishing of the surface to remove any oxide film or surface irregularity and provide a design, a clean surface texture, or a polish effect, and oxidizing the surface with aluminum or other metallic oxides that protect the surface or serve as a base for subsequent treatment or both. Chemical finishes permit only limited colors that are not as satisfying as the color films often on electrolytically applied anodized or oxide films. Number 3. Electrolytic finishes Commonly referred to as anodized finishes, these finishes are based on the specific ability of aluminum to develop a protective coating of oxide on its surface. The coating form may be transparent or opaque, it is hard, yet when colored finishes are desired, it is porous enough to absorb dyes until the final treatment, which sells the surface. Of the colors used in anodic treatments, architectural gold has proven to be one of the most stable from the standpoint of feed resistance. Others are blue and, more recently, brown and black. 4. Electroplating Aluminum can be covered with a protective or decorative film or another metal, usually by electrodeposition. In the case of copper and nickel, the coating should be complete and unbroken. Otherwise, there will be galvanic action which is destructive to aluminum. Number 5. Pulsilin or vitreous enamel. This finish forms a hard, resistant surface. It is available in a broad color range that creates a different feeling in that colors are glassy, whereas anodic color is metallic in nature. Number 6. Paint. Paint, lacquer, and enamel can be applied as finishes to aluminum. Surfaces that had been prepared by a suitable chemical treatment finish. Lead based paints must not be used on aluminum. Iron. Pure iron is tug. 
malleable, silvery white, metal that is soft and ductile as copper. It is easily magnetized. It is the most magnetically per permeable of the metals. It oxidizes rapidly in air and is readily attacked by most acids. It can be hardened by heating and siding cooling and made more playable or more workable by heating and slow cooling. At very low temperatures, it is very brittle. At red hair it is soft and at white hair it can be welded. As pure iron passes through this temperature range, it undergoes changes in its structure and properties that are vitally important in the preparation of steel or an iron carbon alloy. The commercial form in which iron is first prepared is crude or pig iron. This impure form which contains 3% to 4% carbon and varying amount of phosphorus, silicone, sulfur, and manganese is the starting point from which all other kinds of iron and iron alloys or steel are produced. The key to the various types of iron and steel is the carbon-iron relationships. Types of iron Two types of iron. Number one, cast iron. is an iron carbon alloy that contains more than 1.7% carbon. Is poured while molten into forms. It can be easily cast into any shape, but it is too hard and brittle to be shaped by hammering, rolling, or pressing. Cast iron is used in the architectural field mainly for piping and fittings, ornamental ironwork, hardware as the base metal for porcelain enameled, plumbing picture, pictures, and for miscellaneous casting such as floor and wall brackets for railings. Fins, circular stairs, manhole, covers, and gratings. The types of cast iron generally used are Greek cast iron and malleable cast iron. Cast irons find their largest use in heavy machinery and industry because it has significant compressive strength and the ability to absorb energy and stop vibration. Number 2. Roth iron is almost pure iron with less than 0.1% carbon, usually not more than 0.05%. Contains 2.5% of slag or iron silicate in purely physical association, not alloyed. Roth iron is soft, malleable, tug, fatigue resistant, and resistant to progressive corrosion. It has good machinability and can be forged, bent, rolled, drawn, and span. It can be welded by any of the commonly used procedures. Roof iron is available in the form of pipes, plates, sheets, specially shapes, and bars. Roof iron is now used in the architectural field, primarily in the form of genuine roof iron pipe, chain, sheet, and ornamental iron work. Roof iron pipe is used extensively for plumbing, heating, and air conditioning where a corrosion-resistant, thug, durable material is required. Because it is intrinsically related to classical architecture and requires high-skilled craftsmanship, Roth ironwork today is used only in furniture, railing, fences, grills, and small decorative objects. Steel the word steel refers usually to plain carbon steels, which is defined as alloys of iron and carbon, which do not contain more than 2% carbon and which are made in malleable or hincot form. In the plain or straight carbon steels, the iron is always in excess of 95%. Phosphorus, sulfur, oxygen, and nitrogen are present. The last three as impurities. Manganese, silicon, aluminum, copper, and nickel may also be present either as residual impurities or as elements deliberately added in small quantities to control the properties of the steel. Carbon steel can be rough, rolled, cast, and welded, but not extruded. Of steel. Number 1. Roof carbon steels. Types of roof carbon steels. Structural steel. This is a medium carbon steel with its carbon content 
control to give both the strength and ductility necessary for its use. Structural steel is available in angles, channels, L beams, H columns, T shapes, Z shapes, plates, round pipe columns, sheet piling, open web joist, light steel framing shapes. Next, re reinforcement of concrete. Fully deformed bars of varying grades and diameter. Next, a sheet and strip. Steel sheet is made from low carbon steels, generally containing about 0.15% carbon and not exceeding 0.25% carbon. Strip, by definition, is sheet material that is 12 or less wide. It is used in fabricated form as decking, galvanized sheet, expanded metal, panels and sandwich, panels, and as a base metal for porcelain animal. Next is corrugated steel. This is rigidized sheet fabricated from low carbon cold or hot rolled steel sheets which are either galvanized or covered with some type of bituminous coating. If galvanized corrugated steel is silvery in color and has a glaring frosted surface, it is generally av available in 18, 20, 22, and 24 and 26 gauge shape and strip. Next is steel mesh and wire cloth. They are used for concrete reinforcement, lath for plaster, stucco, stucco, and cement, fencing in six screens. Next is steel windows and doors. And lastly, hardware, such as nails, screws, rivets, and etc. Alloy steels. Steels to which manganese, silicone, aluminum, titanium and molybdenum have been added in sufficient quantity to proceed to produce properties and obtainable in carbon steels in cast rolled or heat treated form. The alloying elements are added to increase the following properties strength hardness ease and depth of hardenability performance and high or low temperatures electromagnetic properties wear resistance, electrical conductivity or resistivity. In structural applications, only the properties of strength, expansion, resistance to corrosion, ductility, and workability are of interest to the architect. Types of alloy seals. First, high strength, low alloy seals are a growth of three name steels with improved mechanical properties and resistance to atmospheric corrosion. They are being increasingly used as reinforcing for pre stressed concrete, high strength bolts, special structural steels and cables for elevators and etc. And the second one is stainless steels, generally used in architecture are highly alloyed steels that contain more than 10% chromium. They are character characterized by their resistance to heat, oxidation, and corrosion. They are used where corrosion resistance, durability, and minimum of maintenance is necessary, principally for exterior and interior wall finishes, doors, windows, trims, railings, signs and letters, appliances, and etc. Copper. Copper is ductile, malleable, non-magnetic metal with the characteristics of bright, reddish-brown color. It has the highest electrical and thermal conductivity of any substances except silver. Copper useful alloys have enough strength for the minor structural work. It is attacked by alkalis and many of the common acids. It is highly resistant to corrosion by air and salt water. On exposure, it soon reacts to form its surface layer of an insoluble green salt which retards further corrosion. This green color on copper is known as is patina. Copper can be cast, drawn, extruded, hot and cold work, spun, hammered, punched, welded, brazed, and soldered. The galvanic action of copper must be considered when copper is used in architecture. When in contact with many of the common construction materials and in the presence of an electrolyte, it will corrode these materials near the area of contact. The copper itself, being cathode, will not erode.
Therefore, a careful check should be made of the methods of attachment, support, and securing into place. A scapper is one of the best electrical conductors. It finds tremendous use in the entire electrical field, from very fine wires to bus bars. Capper sheet and strip are used for roofing and flushing. Tin Tin is a soft, ductile, malleable, bluish-white metal. Because it is normally covered with a thin film or stannic oxide, it resists corrosion by air, moisture, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, or which usually tarnishes and corrodes other metals. It takes a highly reflective polish and has the ability to wet other metals. The main use of the tin is in metallic form of either pure tin or tin containing alloys for protective coating on stronger metals. Architectural uses of tin include bronzes, brasses, plate, mirrors, gilding, solders, hardware, and fusible alloys. Zinc Zinc is medium hard bluish white metal. It is characterized by brittleness and low strength. It is readily attacked by acids and alkalis. It is resistant to corrosion by water. On exposure to air, a film of zinc carbonate or oxide forms which protects zinc from further oxidation. The most important uses of zinc are as protective coatings or galvanizing on iron and steel as dye casting metal and as an alloying element in brasses. Galvanizing is a process whereby a protective coat of zinc is applied to steel and iron to protect them against corrosion. The advantage of coating them with the zinc is that should the iron or steel become exposed through wear aging or discontinuities. Galvanic reaction between the coating and the base metal causes the zinc to corrode and form compounds which cover and continue to protect the iron in steel for as long as any zinc remains. The most common galvanized material used in architecture is galvanized iron, sheet, and strip. Galvanized sheets become defaced and discolored when subjected to dampness and extremes of temperature. If the sheets are piled flat in the open or tightly bundled in a warehouse, the zinc coating can be also damaged by the consequent absence of oxygen and carbon dioxide between two sheets. This absence prevents the formation of a protective film of zinc carbonate. Instead, zinc hydroxide forms and destroys the galvanizing. Brass Brass is fundamentally an alloy of copper and zinc with small quantities of other elements sometimes added to give the special qualities. The copper-zinc proportions may vary from 95% copper and 5% zinc to 55% copper and 45% zinc. As a class, brass alloys are less hard and strong than steels, but are superior in workability and resistance to corrosion. All brasses react with other metals, when brass is used in direct contact with any other metal, a careful check should be made of its position on the galvanic series. Brass should not come into direct contact with iron, steel or stainless, aluminum, zinc or magnesium. If there is an electrolyte present or the possibility of one forming at the point of contact. In architecture, brasses are used for windows, doors, door and window frames, and for ornamental metalwork such as railings, trims, grills, and etc. They are also used extensively for finished hardware, plating of hardware, and other miscellaneous accessories such as screws, nuts, and bolts, anchors, and etc. Bronze True bronze is an alloy of copper and tin which varies only slightly from 90% copper and 10% tin composition. This bronze is a rich golden brown metal, originally worked by forging and particularly suited for casting since 
it is corrosion resistant, dense, and hard enough to take an impression of a mold of any delicacy whatever. The term bronze, however, is no longer used in this limited sense. In commercial practice, the terms brass and bronze may be used without much regard for their original meanings. The term bronze now usually has a prefix and indicates alloys of copper with silicon, manganese, aluminum, and other elements with or without zinc, for example, silicon bronze. A few brasses are known as bronze because they have the characteristic bronze color. Of the three types of so-called bronzes in architectural work, only one is true bronze. This is the statuary bronze, which consists usually of 97% copper, 2% tin, and 1% zinc. As for the others, architectural bronze is really a leaded brass, and commercial bronze is one of the more commonly used brasses, which has 90% copper and 10% zinc. The architectural uses of bronze are confined to statuary, plaques, medallions, and other ornamentation and miscellaneous rough and finished hardware. Chromium Chromium is a steel white metal which takes a brilliant polish and is harder than cobalt or nickel. It is non-magnetic at ordinary temperatures but becomes magnetic at 13 degrees Fahrenheit. It does not tarnish in air, resist oxidizing agents, is soluble in acids and strong alkalis. The principal use of chromium is an alloying ingredient in ferrous and non-ferrous metallurgy. Chromium plating is one of the most commonly encountered usage of this material in architecture. It gives a thin, hard, bright, wear-resistant surface which sheds water when highly polished. The metals that can be plated with chromium include aluminum, copper, iron, magnesium, nickel, titanium, zinc, and their alloys. The chromium is electrodeposited as a thin layer of pure metal. Nickel Nickel is an inert silvery metal. It is resistant to strong alkalis and to most acids. It resembles iron in strength and toughness and copper in its resistance to oxidation and corrosion. Nickel takes a high polish and can be hot and cold rolled, forged, bent, extruded, spun, punched, and drawn. When allied with other metals, nickel imparts its qualities of strength, hardness, toughness, ductility, corrosion resistance, and strength at high temperature to the resulting material. The major use of nickel, therefore, is in alloys. Another important use of nickel is as protective or decorative coating of four other metals. It can be applied to the following base metals and their alloys. Aluminum, brass, copper, iron, magnesium, steel, tin, and zinc. Lead Lead is a blue, gray soft, very heavy metal. It is extremely workable has good corrosion resistance, is easily recovered from scrap materials, and is relatively impenetrable to radiation. The corrosion resistance of lead arises from the fact that metallic does not react with many compounds or solutions. And with certain others, it forms compounds which act as protective coatings against further corrosion. Lead is available, extruded in the forms of pipe, rod, wire, ribbon, etc rolled into sheet, foil, strip, and cast. There are several grades of lead metal of which corroding lead, chemical lead, and common desulfurized lead are of interest to the architect. Corroding lead is used for fine white lead paints, red lead litharge. Chemical lead and common desulfurized are used for sheet, pipe, powder lead, ribbon lead, and alloys. Lead also find many uses in rough hardware items such as expansion shields for securing bolts, screws, and other accessories in machinery, washers, lead-headed nails, and etc. 
Methods of joining metals Soldering, brazing, welding, rivets Soldering Soldering is a method to join metals to make electrical connections to seal joints hermetically with another lower melting metal or alloy called the solder. Since the temperatures used are comparatively low, there is no alloying action between the solder and the metals being joined, which are usually stronger than the solder itself. Solder joints have very little tensile, shear, or impact strength. Therefore, this method should not be used where a strong joint is required. Solders, solders are mostly alloys of tin and lead in various proportions with a small percentage of other elements added to give special characteristics. They can be divided into the following major types. Tin lead, tin lead antimony, silver lead. Tin lead solder of the 50% tin, 50% lead variety is the most commonly used general, general purpose of solder. Some tin lead are used for coating the metals before soldering. This is known a pre-tinning. There are different methods of soldering. Number 1. Metal bat dip, defined as a metal joining process where the workpieces to be joined are immersed in a pot of molten solder. Because of the relatively low melting temperature of the solder between 350 and 600 degrees Fahrenheit, only adhesion between the solder and the workpieces results. A flux or metal cleaner is used to prepare the workpiece for bonding with the solder. Typically, deep soldering is an automated process used exten extensively in the electronics assembly industry. Number 2. Soldering Iron In this method, the iron piece is preheated and applied to the joint along with the solder and the flux. The flux is a substance used in soldering to clean the surface of the metals to be joined and to aid fluidity. The heat from the iron forms the soldered joint. Number 3. Torch The parts to be soldered are heated by the torch flame and then the solder and the flux are applied. This method is limited to metals which can be heated without al altering their characteristics. Number 4. Sweat method the heating of the metals to be joined causes the solder to run into the joint. This is the method used for joining copper tubing and fittings. Fluxes for soldering are generally of three types, corrosive, neutral, and non-corrosive. Corrosive fluxes are known as acid type and salt type, salt type fluxes and include chlorides of zinc, ammonium, calcium, magnesium, aluminum, and other metal. Care should always be taken with the corrosive fluxes. The residue must be quickly removed, as it is not only corrosive to the metal being joined, but it is also electrically conductive as a rule as a rule and therefore cannot be used for most electrical work. Neutral fluxes are mild in type and are used for easily soldered metals such as copper, brass, lead, and tin plate. Steric acid is a typical neutral flux. Non-corrosive fluxes leaves residues which are non-corrosive and non-conductive and therefore need to be need not to be removed. Rosin is the principal flux of this type. So let's proceed to brazing. Brazing is a type of soldering in which the operating temperatures are high but lower than in welding and in which stronger and higher melting alloys 
are used to fill the joints, which consequently are stronger than ordinary solder joints. The bond is obtained by alloying between the brazing mat material and the surface of the joint metals. Brazing is generally used where the shape and position of the joint or the composition of the metal or metals are not adaptable to welding. In brazing, the type of metal to be joined, the brazing material, and their color are equally important because galvanic action, strength of the joint, matching of the colors play a significant part in the finished product. Brazing material fall into six major types. Aluminium, aluminum, silicon, copper, phosphorus, silver, copper, and copper zinc, magnesium, and heat-resistant alloys. Each type is particularly suited to a certain group of metals. The brazing materials are prepared by the melting and mixing together the metallic ingredients to fix and control proportions. Welding Welding is the process by which two metals are so joined that there is an actual union of the interatomic bonds. This may be brought about by close contact, heating, pressure, adding molten, molten metal or combinations of these methods. The resulting joints are as strong or stronger than the metal's joint. Welding may be divided into two general types. Pressure welding in which pressure and the heat make the weld and fusion welding in which the heat and added metal make the weld. In fusion welding, the methods of heating are gas flame and electric arc. The gas flame now generally used is acetylene mixed with oxygen. It will deliver about 5,500 degrees Fahrenheit of heat, which is sufficient to melt the welding rod and the surrounding metal and then fuse them together. In the electric arc method, when the welding rod or electrode is brought near the joint of the metals to be welded, an electric arc is formed which melts and fuses the metal and the welding rod. And last but not the least, Rivets. Rivets are devices used to join or fasten the metals. The rivet, a metal cylinder or rod which has a head at one end, is inserted through holes in the materials being joined, and then the protruding end is flattened to tie the two pieces of the material together. Metals for concrete reinforcement Number 1. Steel bars Number 2. Fire fabric Number 3. Expanded mesh Number 4. Lats Okay, so steel bars Reinforcement for concrete construction is mostly in the form of steel bars and rods of a round or square cross section. The bars may be plain or deformed with logs or projections for better bonding to the concrete. They are called billet steel bars or rail steel bars. Billet steel bars are made by the op open hearth furnace by the acid bessemer furnace and meet fixed chemical compositions. They are rolled, rolled from billets directly reduced from ingots and come in three grades structural, intermediate, intermediate, and hard. For architectural purposes, the intermediate grade is the most generally used. Rail steel bars are rolled from standard D rails and come only in one grade. Steel bars vary in size from 1 fourth inch to 1 and 1 fourth inch and in lengths of 20 or 30 feet. 
Wire fabric Wire fabric made of cold drawn steel wire is widely used for the reinforcement of concrete slabs and floors as well as for stuccoed work. There are different types of wire fabric. First, welded wire fabric. Welded wire mesh, also called welded wire fabric, used to reinforce concrete slabs used in light construction, consists of a series of wires welded together to form a grid pattern. It comes in various sizes and spacing and and gauges long. Second is triangle mesh wire fabric. Triangle mesh wire fabric is built up of either single or stranded long longitudinal wires with cross wires or band wires running diagonally across the fabric. The longitudinal wires are spa spaced at 4 inches on centers and the cross wires 4 or 8 inches apart. Next is expanded mesh. This is manufactured from solid steel sheets. To form the expanded mesh, the sheet is first cut or pierced in staggered slots or patterns. Then the sheet is held by the two sides parallel to the slots and stretched by pressure until the desired openings or forms are obtained. Sheets may also be stamped, perforated, or deformed into an open mesh. The forms into which sheet can be shaped include diamond, crimped, herringbone, and zirib, to name only a few. Expanded mesh is therefore free from mechanical and welded joints. Example, steel grid. And last metal for concrete reinforcement is the lats. In addition to the various meshes mentioned above, permanent centering or self-centering lats are produced in many forms. These lats are furni furnished either in flat or segmental sheets pressed into a series of solid ribs between which the metal is stamped, perforated or, or deformed into an open mesh meshwork. These lats are furni furnished, painted or galvanized and in op open hurt mild steel or in special copper bearing or alloy steel storage in care for metal reinforcement metal reinforcement shall be stored in rocks above the ground and away from moisture and vegetation if a large quantity of reinforcement is stored at a site for an extended period it is well to build a shed over the storage rocks a bright red rust such as forms in a few days on reinforcement exposed to rain is not in any way detrimental actual rust scales however may indicate a reduction in the effective cross-section of the bar. Deep scaling should be considered a sufficient reason for condemning the use of reinforcement unless it is first cleaned of mill and rust scale and used as the equivalent of a smaller size. All reinforcement should be kept free from oil, which will tend to reduce the bond between concrete and steel. Ferrous and non-ferrous metals Metal is any of a class of elementary substances as gold, silver, or copper, all of which are crystalline when solid and many of which are characterized by opacity, ductility, conductivity, and a unique luster when freshly fractured. Ferrous metal is a metal containing iron as a principal element. Non-ferrous metal is basically any metal containing little or no iron. Ferrous metals Iron A malleable ductile magnetic silver white metallic element from which pig iron and steel are made. Pig iron 
crude iron that is drawn from blast furnace and cast into pigs in preparation for conversion into cast iron, wrought iron, or steel. Cast iron, a hard, brittle, non-malleable iron based alloy containing 2% to 4.5% carbon and 0.5% to 3% silicon, cast in a sand mold and machined to make building products. Malleable cast iron. Cast iron that has been annealed by transforming carbon content into graphite and removing it completely. Wrought iron. A tough, malleable, relatively soft iron that is readily forged and welded, having a fibrous structure containing approximately 0.2% carbon and a small amount of uniformly distributed slag. Steel, any various iron-based alloy having a carbon content less than that of cast iron and more than that of wrought iron. Carbon steel, ordinary unalloyed steel in which the residual elements as carbon, manganese, phosphorus, sulfur, and silicon are controlled. Mild steel, a low ca carbon steel containing from 0.15% to 0.25% carbon also called soft steel medium steel a carbon steel containing from 0.25% to 0.45% carbon hard steel a high carbon steel containing from 0.45% to 0.85% carbon spring steel a high carbon steel containing from 0.85% to 1.80% carbon Alloy steel, carbon steel to which various elements as chromium, cobalt, copper, manganese, molybdenum, nickel, tungsten, or vanadium have been added in sufficient amount to obtain particular physical or chemical properties. Stainless steel, an alloy containing a minimum of 12% chromium, sometimes with nickel, manganese, or molybdenum as additional alloying element. High strength, low alloy steel, any of a group of low carbon steel containing less than 2% alloy in a chemical composition specifically developed for increased strength, ductility, and resistance to corrosion. Weathering steel, a high strength, low alloy steel that forms an oxide when exposed to rain or moisture in the atmosphere which adheres firmly to the base of the metal. Zinc, a ductile, crystalline, bluish-white metallic element used for galvanizing iron and steel and in making other alloys. Symbol is capital letter Z and small letter N. Chromium, a lustrous, hard, brittle metallic used in alloy steels for hardness and corrosion resistance and for electroplating other metals. Tin, a lustrous, low-melting, bluish-white metallic element that is malleable and ductile at ordinary temperatures and used in plating and making alloys and soft solders. Symbol is capital letter S and small letter N. Non-ferrous metals. Aluminum, a ductile, malleable, silver-white metallic element that is used in forming many hard Light alloys, often anodized for better corrosion resistance, color and surface hardness. Heat treatable alloy, an aluminum alloy capable of gaining strength by heat treatment. Non heat treatable alloy, an aluminum alloy capable of gaining strength by cold working, also called common alloy. Al clad, an aluminum product clad with an aluminum alloy that is anode to the core alloy thus protecting it physically and electrolytically against corrosion. Duralumin, a light strong alloy of aluminum, copper, magnesium, and manganese. Copper, a ductile, malleable, reddish-brown metallic element that is an excellent conductor of heat and electricity and is widely used for electrical wiring, water piping, and in the manufacture of alloys as bronze and brass. Lead, 
a heavy, soft, malleable, bluish-gray metallic element used in solder and radiation shielding. Brass, any of various alloy consisting essentially of copper and zinc, used for windows, railing, trim, and finish hardware. Red brass, an alloy of from 77% to 86% copper with the balance zinc. Aluminum brass, an alloy of about 75% copper, 2% aluminum, small amounts of other elements with the balance zinc. Common brass, an alloy of about 65% copper and 35% zinc. Naval brass, an alloy of 60% copper and 40% zinc. Munts metal, an alloy of from 55% to 61% with 39% to 45% zinc, also called alpha beta brass. Bronze, traditionally any of various alloys consisting essentially of copper and tin, and sometimes traces of other metals. Silicon bronze, an alloy of 97% copper with 3% silicon. Gold bronze, an alloy of about 90% copper, 5% zinc, 3% lead, and 2% tin. Phosphor bronze, a hard corrosion resistant alloy of about 80% copper, 10% tin, 9% antimony, and 1% phosphorus. Aluminum bronze, any of various alloys containing a high percentage of copper with from 5% to 11% aluminum and varying amounts of iron, nickel, and manganese, also called all bronze. Commercial bronze, an alloy of about 90% copper and 10% zinc. Architectural bronze, an alloy of about 57% copper, 40% zinc, 2.75 lead, and 0.25% tin. Manganese bronze, an alloy of about 55% copper, 40% zinc, and up to 3.5% manganese. Antimony, a brittle, crystalline, silvery white metallic element used chiefly in alloys. Cadmium, a white ductile metallic element resembling tin used in plating and making certain alloys. Carbide, a very hard material of carbon and one or more heavy metals as tungsten carbide used for cutting edges and dyes. Magnesium, a light ductile silver white metallic element used in lightweight alloys. Manganese, a hard brittle metallic element used chiefly as an alloying element to increase the hardness and toughness of steel. Nickel, a hard silvery white malleable and ductile metallic element used in steel and cast iron alloys and in electroplating metals which requires corrosion resistance. Silicon, a non-metallic element having amorphous or crystalline forms used especially in electronic devices at strengthened low alloy steels. Tungsten, a heavy, brittle, gray-white metallic element having a high melting point and used in electrical elements and for hardening alloys. Vanadium, a malleable, ductile, grayish metallic element used in forming alloys. Once again, this is group 3. Thank you for watching.